sports fans and baseball fans and White Sox fans and Yankees fans and anybody else who cares to watch. I am here with the White Sox update from August 8th through the games of August 14th. Now, before I go on with this uh, recap of, of the White Sox Week in Review, weekly recap, I want to let everybody know that on Sunday the 22nd, there will be no White Sox recap because I am going to be out of town. I'm going to be traveling, and I am not going to be uh, probably in the best position to put up a video um, about the, the White Sox, or really about anything. So uh, there will be no uh, August 22nd White Sox recap. That will resume on August 29th. So with that out of the way, let's talk about Sunday, August 8th, and this was the White Sox versus the Cubs. And the matchup, the pitching matchup for this game was Cease versus Davies, and the White Sox came in 65 and 46, and then they proceeded to have batting practice on Davies of the Cubs. <clears throat> I think we got like five runs in the second, and we had seven runs after the third. So anyway, uh, the White Sox, for the White Sox, Anderson was three for five with a homer and an RBI. Jimenez was three for four with two homers and five RBIs. Vaughn was two for three with a homer and three RBIs. Cease pitched five innings. He allowed five hits and three earned runs. For the Cubs, Ortega was two for four. He's a good young player, that Ortega is. Deichman, my friend Deichman, uh, was one for four with an RBI. And Frank Schwindel was one for one with two RBIs. Cease uh, got the win. He went five innings, five hits allowed, three earned runs, and Davies got the loss. He went two innings, allowed seven hits, and seven earned runs. The White Sox won that game 9-3, to three, won it real big. And with that, we went to 66-46 and 46 and 1-0 and on the week and started a series against Minnesota, visiting Minnesota. And in this particular first game of the Minnesota series, Giolito went up against Burroughs. Um, for the White Sox, Anderson was 3-for-5 with a homer and two RBIs. Jimenez was 2-for-4 with two homers and five RBIs. Moncada was 2-for-5 with a homer and an RBI. Goodwin was 1-for-4 with an RBI. And Robert was 2-for-5 with an RBI. Um, and for the Twins, really, it was just the Sano show. And he was one for three with a homer and an RBI. Burroughs got the loss for the Twins. He went two, pitched, uh, gave up five hits and six earned runs. And Giolito got the win. He went eight. Eight impressive innings where he allowed only two hits and one earned run. And the White Sox cruised in this game 11-1. And went to 67 and 46 and 2 and 0 on the week. That brings us to the August 10th game against the Twins. This was Keuchel versus Jax, and the White Sox came in 67 and 46 and 2 and 0 for the week, as I said. And we lost this particular game 4-3. Uh, for the White Sox, Engel was one for four with a homer and two RBIs. Keuchel uh, pitched six, gave up four hits. Four earned runs. Uh, for the Twins, Arias was one for four with an RBI. Ostadillo was one for three with a homer and two RBIs. And Simmons was two for three. Uh, Jax went six. He got the win. He allowed five hits, three earned runs, and he struck out ten guys. So the White Sox dropped to 67 and 47 with that and two and one on the week. And that took us to the final game against the Twins. This was Ronaldo Lopez versus Bailey Ober. The White Sox came in 67 and 47 and 2 and 1 this week and we lost 1 nothing. 1 nothing on a home run by Polanco in the 6th. 
So, basically, I mean, the what for the White Sox, the offensive stars were just really Jimenez, who was two for four, and that was it. And uh, the Twins, Polanco was two for four with a homer and an RBI, and Larnock was one for two. Uh, Lopez pitched three. He allowed one hit and no earned runs, and Ruiz got the loss for us. One inning pitched, one hit, one home run, one earned run. He gave up the home run to Polanco. Um, Ober went five and a third. He allowed six hits and no earned runs, and then Thielbar actually was credited with the win for the Twins. He went uh, one and a third, zero hits, zero earned runs, and the White Sox dropped to 67 and 48, Two and two for the week. Not very good that we lost two to the Twins. Uh, we we swept, I think, yes. We swept the Cubs, which is good. I said we had to take two out of three or sweep the Cubs. But we really needed to take two out of three. from. The, well, we, I mean, really, we don't for the standings, and I'll get to that at the end of the uh, video. But anyway, that brings us to the Yankee series, game one of which was in Iowa. The Field of Dreams game that was played on a field right next to the Field of Dreams where the uh, Field of Dreams movie was filmed that starred Kevin Costner. Uh, in this game, it was Haney versus Lynn. And uh, <clears throat> the White Sox came in 67 and 48 and 2 and 2 for the week. In a wild, highly offensive game, the White Sox beat the Yankees in the first ever. Field of Dreams game because there's going to be more according to Rob Manfred uh, by the score of 9-8 on a walk-off two-run homer by TA7 Tim Anderson in the bottom of the ninth after New York had come back and scored four in the top of the ninth. So for the Yankees offensive stars were Gardner two for five with a home run and an RBI. Judge two for four. Judge was a stick in our butt by the way. Two for four with two homers, five RBIs, and Stanton one for five with a homer and two RBIs. Haney pitched five. He allowed five hits and seven earned runs. Britain got the loss, though. We got to Britain. Uh, one, uh, he pitched a third of an inning, one hit, and two earned runs. So for the White Sox, Anderson was two for five with a homer and three RBIs. The homer, of course, was the walk-off homer. Abreu was one for two with a homer and an RBI. Jimenez was two for four with a homer and three RBIs. And Zavala, Zavala coming around offensively. He's getting used to playing in the majors. One for three with a homer and two RBIs. What do you guys think when um, Grandal comes back? Who should go down, Collins or Zavala? It's looking more and more like it really should be Collins who goes down. But we'll see what happens because... The White Sox had, you know, kind of hitched their cart to Collins as the catcher in waiting and the and the backup catcher. But he's probably still got options. So I would say, you know, um, send, uh, you know, keep Zavala. He's better defensively than Collins, and neither one of them has really learned to hit major league pitching yet. Anyway, Lynn went five in this game, allowed four hits and four earned runs, but Hendricks got the win after he was bailed out by Tim Anderson. He went one inning, allowed three hits, four earned runs, and he, that brought his record to seven and two on the year. Uh, we will find out that Hendricks apparently cannot pitch against the Yankees for some reason. Everybody else, you can shut them down, close the doors, but not against the Yankees. So the White Sox improved to 68 and 48 and 3 and 2 for the week, and that brings us to August 13th, where there was no game because the teams were moving back to Chicago. And that brings us to August 14th, where there actually was a game. The Yanks at the White Sox, this was Tyon versus Cease. Cease is like, that guy is like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. One game he's great, the next game he's terrible. The White Sox come in 68 and 48 and 3 and 2 on the week, but they lose in 10 innings, 7 to 5. For the Yanks, Judge was 3 for 4 with a homer and 3 RBIs, and Gallo was 2 for 4 with 2 home runs and 3 RBIs. Judge, pain in our ass, really. 
Ty on, pitched five, he allowed seven hits and three earned runs. And Green got the win for the Yankees. He went one and a third, allowed two hits and one earned run. For the White Sox, Abreu was four for five with a homer and an RBI. Jimenez was two for four with two RBIs. Robert was two for four with a homer and two RBIs. Cease, here we go, Cease, five innings pitched, four hits, three earned runs. Hendricks got the loss, though, for a third of an inning, two hits, and three runs, two of them earned. The White Sox dropped to 68 and 49 and three and three for the week. So, not the greatest of weeks, but didn't have to be. Because um, while all of this was happening, the Indians were losing to Oakland and then going back and forth, win, lose, win, lose with uh, Detroit. And so now the second place team in the Central Division is Detroit, and they're 11 games behind us. So let me paint a picture for you here. This is why the White Sox are going to end up winning the Central Division division. There's 45 games left. If the White Sox were to go 22 and 23 over that span, play one game under 500, which they have, if you've been watching the weekly recaps, there's has barely, there has practically never been a week where they played under 500. It, it probably happened maybe once, a couple times, but over a 45 game span, they're not gonna play under 500. But if they did, if something happened and they for some reason played at a 22 and 23 clip over the last 45 games, the Detroit Tigers would have to go 33 and 12 to be one game ahead of us. 33 and 12. So, uh, and that's 733 uh, baseball, which no team in baseball has done so far this year. I mean, over a 45 game stretch, maybe somebody did, but overall, nobody is playing 733 ball. And that would be incredible. So that's why we're, we've got this, the Central Division locked up. Division title, it's in the bag. The problem is gonna be, again, I keep saying this, it's gonna be the postseason. I mean, we just dropped, uh, we just went one and one to the Yankees and we dropped two of three to the Twins. The Twins, absolutely, we should have won two. The Yankees, I mean, what it really proves is, I mean, we had to come back with a two-run home run in the bottom of the ninth in one game to beat the Yankees. And then in the other game, we lost to them in extras. Now, if you want to look at the glass half, full, that means that we're roughly right there with the Yankees. We're kind of right there with them. But if you look at the Yankees in the standings, that's really not that great because the Yankees aren't even yet a playoff team. So um, they're headed there, but they're not there yet. So we're still having problems with good teams and scrappy teams like Kansas City and Minnesota. So um, it's not a good thing. I mean, it's just not. Um, because, you know, when you start playing, I mean, once we hit the playoffs, we're only, only going to see teams like Oakland, Houston, maybe the Yankees, Tampa Bay. Um, it's not going to be fun, people. It won't. Not if we play like this. Now, we still have some time. We have some injuries still that need to heal. You know, like um, Grandall is still not back. And so we will have him back, hopefully, before the playoffs. Um, and Robert and Jimenez, well, Jimenez really has hit his stride. I think he's hit his stride. He's back to the old Jimenez. Robert needs to get up to speed, get back to being the old Robert. Um, and we'll see what happens then. But um, it isn't really uh, great news that we're playing like this. Uh, coming down the stretch and we still have some tough games ahead so it's going to be uh, we're going to be tested but again it, it's not to see whether we win the division because that's going to happen it's to see how we play against those teams and are we getting better um, you know Hendricks Hendricks just pitched two games crappily against the Yankees 
So, you know, does Hendrix only shut down bad teams? I don't know. We're going to have to find out. But we will definitely be going to the playoffs. That's the good news. And really, anything can happen in the playoffs. I know, I know. People have said that. And it's true. Anything can happen in the playoffs. So, even if we're not as good as Houston, even if we're not as good as Oakland, we could still potentially beat them. Even if we're not as good as Tampa Bay. Again, we could still potentially beat them in the playoffs. But, you'd like to be up on their level. And I don't think we're quite there yet. So, that's what I got for you. Again, a reminder, next Sunday, there will be no White Sox recap. I don't know if I'll put up a video, but if, I, if you do see a video from me, it's going to be a video that I pre-recorded before I went on, um, on leave. And that's going to be on Wednesday. So, there will be no White Sox recap next Sunday, the 22nd. They will resume on the 29th. And that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.